Ryan Trahan just revolutionized YouTube by crossing America with only a penny, but how could he have possibly made 30 clickable thumbnails in 30 days? Like I love titles and thumbnails. It's like a weird passion. It's like my favorite thing about creating. With that being said, I wanted to find out exactly what was his thumbnail strategy. So I carefully analyzed each thumbnail from the series and began to notice something huge. Each thumbnail was built around a three-step blueprint that earned his thumbnails more clicks in one week than Mr. Beast himself. First up is step one, appealing to the widest possible audience. Now, I know this seems obvious, and yes, I climbed to the top of a mountain just for this clip, but Ryan achieved this in a way that others were neglecting. You can visualize who your thumbnail concept will appeal to like this. As it travels farther to this side, it requires less prior knowledge to be intriguing. The penny thumbnails are all far on this side. Of course, he isn't the only one doing this in his niche. Countless others are making challenge videos trying to appeal to as many people as possible. Although, Ryan's series just felt different somehow. So it begs the question, how did the penny thumbnails help Ryan stand out from the competition? Taking a look at the top performers from the series may give us a clue, so I examined the view data. I discovered that viewership naturally declined over the course of the 30 days due to the episodic format, and drew this line in the graph to identify the breakout thumbnails. Right away, I found they were days 6, 10, 11, and 12. Interestingly, these were also common favorites of pro thumbnail designers on Twitter when polled in a tweet, so there's clearly something going on here. They're simple images with only a few elements to focus on, with high contrast making them pop on screen. 6 and 12 are an activity earning him money, a compelling mid-action shot. Scuba diving a golf ball and cleaning a window up close are unlike anything else on YouTube, and they really stand out to new viewers from the more recognizable activities in the series. These represent the Penny series thumbnails at their best, though I think the situation's different for the next two thumbnails. For day 10, the text reset appeals mostly to those who've already watched prior installments and understand what it means. Someone activated the Great Reset for the first time, forcing Ryan to start at a penny again. While anyone could hypothetically be intrigued by the image, it especially intrigues those closer to the middle of the spectrum who have a prior knowledge. Many return viewers were curious to see how he handled the first Great Reset, making this a breakout moment in the series. But why did Day 11 do well? It's the only larger than life image in the series with Ryan neck deep in a sea of pennies. And while it is an eye-catching design, it stands out to me as being an outperformer not necessarily because of the exaggerated style, but maybe more thanks to being a strong follow-up to Day 10. While these thumbnails were particularly effective, there's a major question we haven't covered yet. How did he have time to make a great thumbnail each day? The secret is, he didn't. We made all 30 thumbnails beforehand, which is something that feels like the only way this would have worked. You can even see in the later vlogs that his clothes are dirtier and his facial hair is longer, while the thumbnails are much cleaner. But how did he put these thumbnails together? And how could he actually make sure he could use them all? And so we asked ourselves like, what are some ways I might make money during this series? Probably will make money during the series. And we just made thumbnails for them. Some are tied to a specific activity, while others are more general, allowing them to be applied to almost any video from the series. Though it wasn't just a strategy to get more clicks, these thumbnails thumbnails even helped make better videos. Instead of waking up and me like not having a strategy and being like, oh my gosh, what am I gonna do today? I'm in like Missouri and I don't know how to make money. I have a, a thumbnail that is a money making method that I could be like, all right, we can use this thumbnail next. I'm gonna go do this and I'm gonna make right. some money. And so it's kind of this like uh, reverse engineering where the thumbnail's done and now I just have to go do it mm -hmm. instead of like, I did it. Oh, Let's make a thumbnail, I guess. Now, learning from these thumbnail designs has shown us that they're effective concepts, but they don't explain exactly how he was able to stand out from his peers. Others in his niche are on this side of the spectrum as well. They just do it in a different way. Their thumbnails will often lean into shock value and use only their spectacles to earn a viewer's attention, while Ryan's were just centered around his daily activities. At first, they're almost boring by comparison, but when you dig deeper, it's easy to see what makes them so special. Which brings us on to step two, build a stronger relationship with the community. Ryan is doing this on a level never before seen in his niche. For some context, the series brought us 456 minutes of Ryan in just 30 days, while Mr. Beast has only posted 61 minutes so far this entire year. Obviously, a longer video doesn't mean it will be better, but time spent with a creator can really affect a viewer's perception of them. And you don't have to look long to realize that a lot of people browsing YouTube want to be a part of something. 
they want more authenticity, and they want something new. I found a lot of YouTube comments saying they think YouTube is becoming stale, but they aren't the only ones who feel this way. How many times can we repeat the same shit on these platforms before it gets stale? Tell them a story, and I think people will engage like in a huge way. I think that like right now YouTube, so much of YouTube, especially the creator community, feels so stale. I've seen a lot of people say that like YouTube's stale right now. I Isaiah Fono yeah. said that. He said, yeah. he said YouTube's really stale. That's what I, I felt that. Ryan broke the mold with his challenge daily vlog fusion. And because Ryan's style and the vlog format both lend themselves to authenticity, the thumbnails needed to reflect that. He proved you can have highly optimized thumbnails that are still grounded in realism. But why should anyone care about realism in the first place? And I found that realistic thumbnails just feel like me. It feels like, yeah, if my face is not like, <gasps> then yeah. I feel yeah. more connected to the, to the thumbnail. Yeah. If I'm just making a very subtle face that's like, because right. it's realistic and I'm like, oh, that's, that's legit. So we've talked about how he appealed to a wide audience while maintaining realism, but the most important element that increased clicks on his thumbnails is step three, what the viewer sees before a thumbnail. It's useful to imagine your channel as a painting in a museum. A viewer's perception of an artwork is molded by more than brush strokes. Eight million people aren't traveling to see the Mona Lisa every year just because it's an amazing work of art. Every city in the world has great art in it. It's because they care about the stories behind it, the times it was stolen or vandalized, those who owned it, the person who painted it, why he painted it, and how his story is connected to the artwork. In some ways, the little details that make up a thumbnail like this are irrelevant. The video itself almost transcends the need for a thumbnail because just the fact that it's a part of a series people have grown to love is enough for them to click. And that's the power of a strong brand. Video ideas, packaging, storytelling, these are just building blocks that make up a larger picture. Ryan is telling a story larger than one video, larger than one series. His channel and the brand surrounding it tells the authentic story of himself. That's what viewers become attached to in the long term, and it's what compels them to watch the next video no matter what the thumbnail is. Each viewer feels a certain way about Ryan's videos, and even though they might not be able to easily put those feelings into words, one thing is for sure. His channel is leaving a positive impact on millions of people. Ryan has shown us that YouTube really is at its best when it's about human connection. Those are the moments we crave, even yeah. like off camera, in a human level, we crave those like real yeah. emotions, real conversations. And so that was a huge like turning point to me to realize like, I'm a human being. He discovered that he can tell great stories even from little human moments. I find it exciting, just the mundane things, like even the Penny series, the idea of going out and like selling soda. Why is that so entertaining? And I'm not like being frozen alive in a sure. video. Yeah. <laughs> but like, why do I enjoy watching this dude like sell soda? It's because what I like to watch, it's, it's real, it's fun. This is possibly why he stopped posting shorts after testing them earlier this year. Sure, they brought in tens of millions of views for his channel, but were they allowing the viewers to connect with him and each other in a meaningful way, or were they just fast food entertainment? That's a difficult question that might not have a perfect answer, but to really understand the shortcomings of short form content, consider watching this video where I break it all down and share my thoughts.